Celtics for Fosta. Hey, I need everybody to slow down. Everybody to slow down. Everybody to slow down. Everybody to slow down. My hairs look like My beautician, she's asleep. She don't want to get up right now. <laughs> What's wrong with this This is jail. We don't get to beautify ourselves, so. I don't got nobody to impress. <laughs>I know Maude because she bought a lot of drugs from me, a lot. Yeah. So she was a good customer. There's only been like a couple times that I was in the Cockney Jail that she wasn't. Yeah. This is my home right here. Uh, it's where I sit. My roomies. I'm with Shy. <laughs> okay, get my glasses on. I've been doing tongue since I was a juvenile. It's just like it was normal. It really isn't all that embarrassing because my family has a history of incarceration. It goes back, probably to my papa. He's been incarcerated a few times. Here in Cock County, if you're a Letford, you've probably been incarcerated at least one time. If you want to know how many brothers and sisters I have that's been incarcerated, there's Melissa, Ashley, Julie Parker, Casey, April, my sister Cindy, and Billy. My dad, he did jail time here, and every one of his siblings has been arrested. I've got cousins, if you want to know about those. I've got multiple cousins. And uh, I have one uncle that has never been arrested. It's not just the Letfords. I don't know one family that didn't like my family. I mean, drugs and incarceration, that's all we got. That's just life here in Cock County. My earliest memory I can uh, recall, when I was five, maybe six, I can remember coming to visit with my father. My dad was in a cell across the street, and I can remember looking through the pie holes. It was about, about big enough for a tray to fit through. And I was that tall looking through the holes, and my dad would have to squat down and so I could see him. Believe it or not, the same cell he was in when I was little, I sat in for about six months, a few years back. Well, I guess we're gonna play spades. Let's go gather the troops. Are, are we calmed and ready? Come on, come play spades with us. We do it just to uh, pass the time. We got a wreck yard, but we don't get to do it till night time. Okay, uh, I've known uh, Mandy the longest. I've known her since uh, we were went to school together. I don't quite remember because drugs have a tendency to mess with your head. At Trinity, I've known her for 10 years, 15. 15, yeah. I've known Amber for about 10. How much time have you guys spent in the jail together? 75% <laughs> of your relationship has been incarcerated? Yeah. yeah. We're, we're just like family. And yeah, we fight. We fight. We fight. Yeah, we don't fist fight or nothing. We oh, talk it out. Nice. <laughs> it's normal, like if somebody says you've been in jail, and it's a joke, what kind of bird don't fly? Jail bird, it's just a little joke that everybody thinks like, it's funny. If you ain't been to jail, we don't trust you. That's how you get your street cred around here. I mean, it's the truth about it. Each one of us has caught a, have caught a lot of cases called our uh, men are chicken sh little I'm usually guess. coming to jail anyway, so I'll take the charges because I know I'm coming. Yeah. It's kind of an unspoken rule. If you yeah. know you got warrants and you know you're going to jail, you it it unspoken yeah. in the car that's illegal, yeah. you take that. Yeah. I mean, that's the men we deal with, though. Most of our guys, they're either they're either using us or they're beating us. <laughs> it's one of the other. Use or abuse. Mm -hmm. I've got a hand. Well, this is the first time I've been to jail without being incarcerated with one of my sisters. <laughs> what? Oh, well, technically Ashley's family. So yeah, never mind. I'm not new. Well, what am I? Oh, Missy's family too. That's my <laughs> oldest son's cousin there. I got two, two boys. Aside from uh, 
getting kicked off the school bus. My kids aren't bad kids yet. Um, you I th- said yet? <laughs> yeah. It's yet. My oldest son, when he was little, he wanted me to help him, give him the answers to his problems. I said, no, you're going to figure it out. You're going to be smart enough to figure it out. You're getting out of here. But if he don't leave here, sure, I, I, I'm, I bank on him coming to jail. One of them at least. They're boys. And boys in Cock County, they don't make it without jail time. So you expect your son to get incarcerated at least one time? Yeah. So let me ask you this. So you say that if you're a Ledford, you're bound to yeah. end up in jail at one point or another. Yeah. If you're a boy in Cock County, you're bound to end up in jail. Yeah. So why did you have kids? <sighs> When you're getting high, you don't stop to consider, hey, maybe you should put a condom on to keep from getting pregnant. My two sons, and he's been allowed to communicate with me as, as of right now. Get me. I know how bad it hurts when you have to go to a jailhouse and look to a pile to visit your father. I know what it did to me. This is not the lifestyle for nobody. It's nothing to be proud of. Next, we meet Maude. You walk in the jail cell and you meet this girl. You could tell she's been doing a lot of drugs, missing some teeth. I usually just eat the uh, peanut butter and the cookies. I don't know if you could tell. I may have just took my teeth, the chips hurt my mouth. You don't eat the chips? They hurt. <laughs> can I have one? Sure can. <laughs> you get to meet this likable, lovable girl who's got wrapped up in addiction incarceration, knowing that her family, like this is the story of generational incarceration, generational criminality. She literally used to visit her father and look through the pie hole on the door. And now she did time in that exact cell. It's sad to now know that she thinks it's normal for a boy in Cock County to end up getting in trouble, which means the likelihood of her sons are going to end up in jail. She tells you that. Can you imagine raising this little kid, bouncing him on your lap? He's innocent. You're buying him toys. You've given him a happy meal. But at the same time, you're like, someday you'll be in here. Someday you'll be looking through the bars. Someday you'll be looking through the pie hole. To the outside world, it's not normal. But for Maude, this is a reality. What does she know she was raised in it? To hear how many in her family had been incarcerated, it sounds unbelievable. But while Maude was incarcerated, her cousin got arrested. Guess who happened to be on that arrest raid? Oh, hand up. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, me. I was there. Literally had to walk into the jail cell with all the girls in there. Knock, knock, knock. Oh Maud. Hey, Maud. I just wanted to let you know. I don't want you to get upset or think like anything weird, but like I was with your cousin when she got arrested today. And she's like, which cousin? We probably just beeped her name. Oh, f- that whore. <laughs> but that's one Lefford I don't get along with. She's one of them people that think uh, nothing's ever good enough for her, and she thinks she's above everybody else. Well, <clears throat> she ain't too above us now, is she? <laughs> Karma's a c- ain't it? So not only are we following the Shelton story and seeing how normal them getting incarcerated is, You turn around and I'm like there as a Ledford is arrested while there's a Ledford mod that we're getting to know in jail at the same time. It was such a crazy coincidence that I was like, oh my God, this is a Ledford. That embarrasses me. It what? Embarrasses me. Why? Because we have a bad name. I mean, it's obvious. Ledfords have no luck. These families have been caught in the law enforcement cycle, so it's a learned behavior over and over and over again, like a washing machine. This story, to me, is a peephole into the problem of our country. I don't believe that it's a black, brown, white, whatever issue. I believe in any 
impoverished community where you don't have help, where you don't have nurturing, where you don't have opportunities, where people aren't given a chance, nobody's coming in to teach them better. How do we expect that they can change? I'm passionate about this. Maud is a mom raising kids in the community and you want her kids to not end up in the same cyclical issues.